Michael here for a huge week in LEGO news. First look at Baradar, an exclusive gift with purchase. Darth Jar Jar Jedi Bob and a new Star Destroyer. Legend of Zelda Retro Radio Tuxedo Cat. Plus, I review all the new June Harry Potter sets. And I'll kick off another round of the weekly giveaway. Just subscribe and leave a comment about this week's news. And of course, I'm back with LEGO deals from Amazon and across the web. So if you want to pick anything up to support the channel, there's links in the description below. First from Star Wars, the new micro fighters are over 43% off. Plus, the Darth Vader Stormtrooper and Boba Fett Max are 20% off, and the Cherry Blossoms are 36% off. Over at Target, they've got a bunch of that's 20% off, including many of their store exclusives from Harry Potter, Star Wars, and Disney. And if you want to pick up any of these deals and more and support the channel, there's links to everything in the description below. Next in Lord of the Rings news, LEGO fans have long been awaiting an update about the upcoming Baradur set. And thanks to a video on social media, we finally get our first look. Here we see what looks to be the top of the tower with lots of unique LEGO pieces to create all the spikes. And at the center, of course, is the transparent glowing Eye of Sauron, which looks really cool. The set is set to release on June 1st for 400 $160 and include 5,471 pieces. And included will be 10 minifigures including Sauron, the Mouth of Sauron, Nazgul, Frodo, Sam, Gollum, and two brown and two green orcs. And according to Bricklicker, it looks like we'll also be getting an exclusive gift with purchase, which will be an 18 plus set featuring a build of the Fell Beast, which we see the Nazgul ride in the film. And it said there's going to be three minifigures included, which means this set might have to be a day one purchase for me. Next in LEGO Star Wars news, this week we got our first look at the Rebuild the Galaxy special. Special, including a first look at Darth Jar Jar, Jedi Bob, and some of this year's upcoming sets. In this new story, after an artifact is uncovered, the entire galaxy is rebuilt, truly flipping all the stories and characters you know on their heads, kind of like Marvel's What If series. And in one scene of the trailer, we see a dark version of the Millennium Falcon. And the set should retail for $180 and include 1,579 pieces. And while the one in the movie looks more like the UCS version, this will be a standard playscale Millennium Falcon. Included in this set will be Darth Jar Jar, who's voiced by the original actor. We'll also be getting Darth Rey, Evil C-3PO, a beach version of Luke Skywalker, and White Vader. In the trailer, we also get our first look at Jedi Bob, whose face print definitely looks a bit worn down than we remember him from the 2002 Republic gunship. This minifigure will be included in the Jedi Bob Starfighter set, which will retail for $40 with 305 pieces. And besides Jedi Bob, it's said we might get a clone trooper, a Mon Calamari, and an astromech. Later in the trailer, we also get a look at a TIE Fighter X-Wing hybrid. This combination is a lot of fun and will be part of the X-Wing and TIE Fighter set, which will retail for $110 with 1,063 pieces. Included will have new characters Sig Griebling and Yessie Scale, plus a TIE Pilot, Rebel Pilot, and Astromech Droid. On the whole, I'm super excited about the new sets and eager to check out this four-part special when it comes out on Disney Plus on September 13th. We also got the reveal this week of the Imperial Star Destroyer with 1,555 pieces retailing for $160 on August 1st. First. While a bit smaller than previous playscale versions, they did a nice job capturing the shaping. And like other versions, you can open up the entire set for play inside, which includes the bridge, command room, armory, and more. The set includes seven minifigures, with the highlight, of course, being the 25th anniversary Cal Kestis. You also get Darth Vader, Commander Praji, and an Imperial crew member, an Imperial gunner and Navy trooper, and a stormtrooper. And if you want to pre order the set and support the channel, there's a link in the description below. Next, in LEGO Zelda news, we've got an update on the Great Deku Tree set, which is coming in September. This set will include 2,500 pieces and retail for $300. The build will feature a black display base and swappable leaves to make the Ocarina of Time version the one from Breath of the Wild. The build is said to include Young Link and Link from Ocarina of Time and include a new shield and Ocarina mold, as well as Breath of the Wild versions of Link and Zelda. And all this makes this a must-have for me. Next up, this week LEGO revealed four new 18 plus sets that we have to break down. First up, we've got the LEGO Icons Retro Radio with 906 pieces retailing for $100. While well, not built to represent a specific model, the Retro Radio has all those classic stylings, and it looks great with the handle and the antenna. There are two large dials at the top, and we can see the tuner there at the center. And turning the dial also activates the sound brick inside. Or you can open the back of the build and place in your phone to play whatever song you want. At $100, the sound brick definitely makes it a little expensive, but I think it makes a nice display piece. Next, from LEGO Ideas, we've got the Tuxedo Cat with 1,710 pieces retailing for $100. While quite a bit different from the original submission, the model for the cat turned out really nicely, though the organic shaping doesn't look perfect from all angles. You can turn the head, open the mouth, and pose the ears, and the yellow eyes can be swapped for blue, plus adjust the positioning of the feet and tail. And while this may scare you in the middle of the night, it's a cool set. Next, we've got some French favorites with the Lego Architecture Notre Dame de Paris, with 4,383 pieces retailing for $230. This set is the largest Lego architecture set ever, as we can see it come together with all these sections, and the build looks really accurate with the rounded section at the back and some fun part uses with those 
those magic wands. There are some nice printed dishes and great tile work that you see in the interior. And while there are many other $230 sets that are more worth it for me, I think architecture fans are gonna like this one. Next, we've got the Lego Art Mona Lisa with 1,503 pieces retailing for $100. This set is both a unique interpretation of the original piece and the Lego art line in general, as it's built with overlapping plates and even some prints. The entire frame is made of drum lacquered gold pieces. And I like seeing that the Lego art team's changing it up. Next in Lego Batman news, we're getting an eight in one brickhead set in July with 325 pieces retailing for $20. This set is most similar to the Go Brick Me sets that we've gotten in the past where you can build multiple versions of Batman, though only one can be built at a time. Included will be a blue and gray comic suit, which was previously exclusive to a Comic-Con set. The 1966 Adam West Batman, the 1989 Michael Keaton Batman, Batman from the animated series, Christian Bale's Dark Knight, the armored gray suit from Batman vs. Superman, Batman from the Lego Batman movie, which we have gotten before, and Robert Pattinson's Batman from the Batman. And as a big Brickheads fan, I'm picking this one up. Next in Harry Potter news, thanks to Lego and the Ambassador Network, I'm bringing you my review of the seven sets coming on June 1st. And the designers really went all out this wave. First up, we've got Hogwarts Castle, the Great Hall for $200. This set is the largest piece so far of the new Hogwarts system, and the build is super impressive, as we have the main building for the Great Hall, as well as the courtyard out front. And it all sits atop the rocky base with the staircase, which even opens up to reveal a broom and secret entrance. And the top two sections can be lifted off the base. Flipping around the build, we can see the interior of the Great Hall with the tables and food, the house banners, floating candles, and depiction of the night sky, and a hidden sorcerer's stone. Underneath the Great Hall are three different rooms which can all be slid out of the base. And you can play out the troll attack on the girls' bathroom, students in the Hufflepuff common room, and Coral in the corridor. And I like how they fold for storage, and you can lift the entire thing with them inside. The set includes 10 minifigures and our first big fig troll since 2002. For the students, there's Harry, Ron, Hermione, Terry, Boot, Daphne, Greengrass, and Leanne, plus the Fat Friar, Professor Coral, Professor Vector, and an epic Dumbledore. Next, we've got Triwizard Tournament, The Arrival for $140, featuring the Durmstring and Bobatin schools. This is only the second Durmstring ship we've ever gotten, and they really managed to capture the unique angled details. I like the face at the front, the shields at the back, and of course, the epic cloth sails. Though the ship feels a bit small for minifigures, you can remove the back section to reveal the captain's quarters, with a chair and some accessories. Plus, you can lift off the main deck of the ship to reveal a small bedroom. While smaller than previous versions, the Bobatin Batten's carriage looks nice with the Pegasus out front, a chest at the back, and doors on either side. And the roof can be lifted off to access the interior. And the set also includes build for the Goblet of Fire and Triwizard Cup. And the set includes awesome minifigures for Barty Crouch Sr., Igor Karkaroff, Victor Crumb, Fleur Delacour, and a tall Madame Maxine. Next up, we've got Ollivander's and Madame Malkin's robes for $90. This is the second set of the new Diagon Alley, and I really like these smaller buildings and how they connect. Ollivander's wand shop has a unique look with those yellow windows and the sign out front. And around back, the sides can be pulled open to reveal the full interior. And the shop is jam-packed with wand displays featuring lots of new wand molds. Plus, there's even a sliding ladder to get the ones up top. Madame Malkin's features nice purple accents as well as stickers on either side to add detail. Around back, we can see the two floors, with the register and mannequin on the first floor and the sewing station and fabrics on the top floor. And there's a flower stand and sign to add to the street scene. And included, we've got Ollivander, Harry, a wizard, Madame Malkin, Padma Patil, and a witch. Next up, we've got Hogwarts Castle Potions Class for $40. The Potions Class is full of fun details and can be reconfigured. On the right, we can see the students' tables with the new explosion pieces and the volumetric flask and a stickered blackboard. At the back, there's other equipment as well as this station holding ingredients. The entire classroom can be folded up to a small footprint and they even managed to hide some details on the outside. And this entire section can be placed below the Great Hall and even opened up. And the set includes Hermione, Seamus Finnegan, Pansy Parkinson, and Snape. Next, we've got Aragog in the Forbidden Forest for $20. And I think this is our best build for Aragog yet as you can see the spindly legs and and the printing on the face. And there's a small build tag to the Forbidden Forest. And in this set, you get minifigures for Ron and Harry. Next, we've got the Mandrake for $70. The build feels like Harry Potter's take on the Botanical Collection. You can see the Mandrake's face poking out of the pot, as well as these stems that lead up to large leaves. And just like we see in the movie, you pull it sharp, yeah. you can lift out the Mandrake to unfurl the roots and use the mechanism at the front to make it cry. Finally, we have Buckbeak for $60. The build turned out nicely and is quite sturdy and poseable, with joints for the neck, legs, and tail. And the build is quite large with its wings fully extended. And there's also this little side build with a pumpkin patch and crow. While we've gotten versions of many of these sets before, they really took it up a notch with this new wave, packing in unbelievable detail and really great minifigures. Plus, there's something for everyone with some cheaper 
paper sets, and some sculptural builds. So there you have it, another awesome week in LEGO news. Be sure to leave this video a thumbs up down below if you're as excited as me. And don't forget to subscribe because I'll be back next week with even more LEGO news. And let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. What did you think about all the stories? And which one are you most excited about? And now we've got this week's giveaway winner. Congratulations! And be sure to email me from the About page on my channel so we can coordinate about the prize. And if you want to enter this week's round, just leave me a comment about this week's news. That's all the time we've got for today. Thanks and have a good one!